This is a 69 News Special Report. Good morning, I'm Wendy Davis. Thanks for joining us for the special report. We're interrupting your regular programming to tell you about a hazmat situation going on right now in Northampton County. It is happening on Route 33 near Wind Gap. Here's what we know so far. Around 3.30 this morning, a tanker truck carrying 33,000 pounds of the chemical hydrogen fluoride was involved in an accident on that highway. Now, at this point, officials are still not letting our cameras anywhere near that scene. Police say the crash happened when the driver of the truck swerved to avoid hitting a deer. Now, the truck overturned, causing a leak. And since then, we've been told by county officials that that leak appears to be contained. However, because hydrogen fluoride is highly corrosive and a dangerous chemical, emergency officials immediately ordered the evacuation of homes and businesses within a one-mile radius of that crash scene. Shelter has been set up at Penargel High School. Now, Northampton County officials activated a level two emergency in that area. What that means is that a level two has to do with the scope of the response, and that allows emergency officials to call in help from all over the area. Now, emergency officials tell 69 News no one appears to have been exposed to that leak at all. The driver of the truck, in fact, was taken to the hospital. He has since been released. Now, residents in that area may not be able to return to their homes for at least 12 to 24 hours while that scene is being cleaned up. We're going to have more on the evacuation efforts in a bit, but first let's get the very latest on the situation out there near the scene. We're going to head out to Route 33. That is where our Jackie Ferris has been standing by all morning long. And Jackie, Route 33 is closed down, is that right? It is closed down. We're about a mile south of the 512 exit. I want to show you a little bit of the backup. This thing goes on for miles and miles. This has been going on all morning. It seems to be moving relatively smoothly as far as backups go. It doesn't look at it like it right now, but uh, everyone is being diverted off of 33 because, again, 33 is closed. We're told that... Uh, the accident happened around 3.30 this morning, as you said, when a tractor trailer swerved to avoid a deer in the roadway. The truck overturned. The truck was carrying 33,000 gallons of hydrogen fluoride. Now, hydrogen fluoride is a very corrosive and poisonous gas, but emergency officials say the tanker and its cargo have been contained. Now, again, traffic is backed up for at least four to five miles here. We're just on 33, just south of Wind Gap in Northampton County. And everyone within a mile radius of the Wind Gap exit has been uh, evacuated. And a shelter has been set up at Penargel High School in the borough. It's about 20 minutes from Wind Gap. Residents could be out of their homes anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. Emergency officials say this is a precautionary measure that the tanker and its cargo have been contained. However, we're hearing that there is some gas being released because of what they call pressure buildup. It's called pop gassing. Emergency officials say it's nothing to be concerned about. They have evacuated everyone in the area just as a precautionary measure. Now, as far as the driver, we're being told the driver was taken to the hospital and he has been released. So back up here on 33 is very extensive. You want to make sure that you don't come anywhere near this area because emergency crews have to be able to go in and out and take care of the situation. And if you, want, if you do get in here, you're going to be here for a very long time. Wendy? Talking to, to uh, county officials in just a moment, we're going to be talking to county officials, but um, one of the things that they were telling us is obviously once they get this leak contained, they've got to upright that truck, um, and that would be the final step. Are you seeing any signs that they may be getting closer to that? Have you seen any signs of tow trucks or anything to give you a, a clue as to where they are in this cleanup stage? Well, actually, we have not seen any tow trucks or anything like that. We have been seeing uh, traffic moving very slowly, so it appears that they're trying to get everybody out of the area and, and, and get uh, the road clear so that when it comes time to, to get that tanker off of the roadway and get it out of the area, that it will be uh, quicker to do because they, they're not impeded by a, a bunch of traffic. So traffic seems to be, we see a couple, let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the southbound lanes here. We, it looks clear. We've seen a couple of vehicles go back and forth, mostly trucks. As we say, what we're seeing here is a lot of backup and a lot of frustrated drivers, but they seem to be taking uh, this backup in stride, knowing that emergency officials are doing everything they can to, uh, to get the situation resolved.
right. Jackie Ferris reporting. Jackie, thank you so much. And as Jackie mentioned, quite a backup there, as you can imagine, Route 33 being closed down. Now, if we could take a quick look at the map of that area. This is in the Wind Gap area, and we are told that for folks heading north into the Poconos from the Lehigh Valley area, your best attack at this point to get north would be to take Route 33, then get off the 191 north exit. That's if you want to head up into the Poconos. Now, if you are already there and you need to come back, or if you're in a different area and you need to get to the Turnpike, you're supposed to take 209 south, basically cut into Carbon County, get on the Turnpike there at 209 at that interchange of the Mahoning Valley, I believe it's called, at the Turnpike there in Carbon County, and then that way you can either head north or south, obviously, to or from the Poconos. They say that is your best attack because there is no word at this point when 33 is even going to reopen. At this point, it could be um, another 12 to 24 hours till residents are even allowed back in their home. Um, and I guess it's safe to say that the timeline for the road opening could be in that area as well. All right, let's get the very latest now on the scene up there. We're going to turn to John Conklin. He is the Northampton County Administrator. And, John, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you doing? All right, fine, John. Thank you so much. I guess the big question is how are you doing? What are you hearing from your crews out there as far as where we are in the scene cleanup? Well, I think the last time we spoke, I had mentioned there was a drip coming from the valving and the flanging area of the piping under the tanker. Uh, it's just been reported to me that they have stopped that, which is an excellent sign. Uh, so no further threat from, you know, from the liquid aspect. Uh, I guess the next part in the operation scenario that's being played out is uh, uh, to try to upright this tanker truck to really um, cut down on that amount of time that will, you know, impact the residents and the, and the traveling motorists. Uh, the, the tanker itself is a very, very strong uh, uh, vessel, and um, the thoughts are right now is and that's being played out between the DEP on scene, the hazmat teams, the company representative, and the U.S. EPA are there as well uh, as to whether that's a viable solution, a safe solution, and and uh, once that's all hammered out at the scene, there may be a decision to just upright the vehicle with the with the liquid involved and, uh, and still inside of it uh, to cut down on, you know, perhaps offloading onto another tanker, which we heard could be uh, uh, upwards of uh, even 40 hours to accomplish just the, off the offloading part. So we want to try to really, you know, expedite and make this expedient and uh, expedient and uh, uh, bring this to a quick resolve, but a safe resolve for everyone. Forty hours is that what you said? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, just uh, just offload that chemical if that's if that's uh, you know one of the routes that we ended up making a decision on. So obviously that's something you want to try to avoid if at all possible. Well, bottom line is that we want to you know prevent a, a rupture in any type of uh, tank structure, piping structure, and give us a bigger problem.